in this lecture we will elaborate some steps for calculating the resistance of simple geometries now we have seen that uh, the capacitance is given as c is equal to q over v and in terms of electromagnetic quantities i can write q as simply from the gauss law d dot ds over the surface s enclosing a volume v and v is simply e dot dl with a minus sign over the length l or epsilon e dot ds over a surface s enclosed surface s minus e dot dl over the length l now for resistance we know that r is equal to v over i now v is simply again minus e dot dl over the length l and i is simply j dot ds over the closed surface s is equal to minus el dot dl over the length l j is equal to sigma e dot ds over the closed surface s now if these both quantities are being calculated over the same surface s and length l and we are assuming that either the media is uh, medium is homogeneous or the space dependence of epsilon and sigma are same then we can see from these two equations that rc is simply equal to epsilon over sigma is equal to c by g where g is equal to 1 by r because this will get cancelled out and if this have either we have homogeneous media or these two have same space dependence then this will get cancelled out and all this epsilon over sigma will remain so from our previous lectures we know how to calculate capacitance so we can easily find resistance from the calculation of capacitance as epsilon over sigma into 1 by c so for a case of a coaxial cable this is central conductor at potential v and this is outer sheet which is grounded we calculated the capacitance between the central conductor and the sheath and it was found as uh, c is equal to 2 pi epsilon natural log b by a where this radius was b sorry a and this radius was b now we can find the insulation resistance between the center conductor and the sheath that is the insulation in between can be found having a resistance r is equal to epsilon over sigma into 1 by c and it will be equal to 1 by 2 pi sigma natural log b by a so in this way we can easily find resistance from the capacitance if we know how to calculate the capacitance and that we have done in one of our previous lectures with a sole numerical example now we can also find uh, similarly the resistance or the capacitance for parallel, parallel wire transmission line also that we will not do uh, that we have already done in our power system course now you should try to understand that uh, although this appears very easy and uh, you know quite okay but here we have neglected the effects of fringing fields so that is little difference here because even though the problems may be analogous geometrically 
even when the geometrical configurations are same but these problems are not exactly same because the current flow can be you know strictly confined within the conductor but fields cannot be strictly confined there will always be some fringing fields so uh, the fringing flux around the conductor edges will make computation of uh, capacitance difficult and less accurate it will be now before moving on further i should tell you that uh, for this insulation resistance we calculated in this r per unit length okay so the total resistance total insulation resistance will be r by l the total length of the cable instead of rl it will be r by l because this resistance is like acting in parallel so these resistances are acting in parallel so they instead of being added in series they will be added similar to resistance being added in parallel that's why the total resistance will be r by l and not rl so in this way we can uh, find the total insulation resistance of the coaxial cable now this is one of the method of finding resistance now we will also formulate a similar method which we formulated for cap capacitance calculation uh, now we will formulate a method step wise method for calculation of resistance so what is that process the first step will be we will choose coordinate system which is appropriate for the given geometry like for the coaxial cable we would have gone for the cylindrical coordinate system so we will choose a coordinate system based on geometry okay now we will assume a potential difference between the conductor terminals third step we will find the electric field between or within the conductors within the conductor if the material is homogeneous that is sigma is constant then the general method is just to directly solve del square v is equal to 0 and choose uh and find sorry e is equal to minus of del v now the fourth step we will find the total current i is equal to j dot ds where j is equal to sigma e and e we have found from third step now we can find the resistance as r is equal to v not over i so in this way we can use these five steps to calculate the total resistance of the conductor now we will solve a numerical example by following all these five steps so we are given a uniform thickness conducting material so this conducting material is having a uniform thickness and it is lying in the first quadrant so this is x this is y this is origin and this is the conducting material lying in the first quadrant with the height h so if i see the cross section area from this side so it will appear like this this is a and if this is b then this thickness will be b minus a and this width or height will be h let us say this angle is phi okay now 
we will assume boundary condition that v at phi is equal to zero is this is grounded this terminal is grounded and this terminal is at potential v naught so v at phi is equal to zero is equal to zero v at phi is equal to pi by two is equal to v naught now you see for this symmetry the potential is just a function of this phi only so we will have from laplace equation d2 v by d phi square is equal to zero and v is equal to c1 phi plus c2 and from the boundary conditions we can solve and find c1 and c2 we can find v is equal to 2 v naught by pi phi so j is equal to sigma e is equal to minus of sigma del v is equal to minus a phi sigma dv by r d phi just the gradient only we am taking i am not doing nothing uh, fancy i am just taking gradient minus a phi 2 sigma v naught by pi r so i will be equal to j dot ds over surface s it will come out to be 2 sigma v naught by pi h dr over r when r varies from a to b so it will be 2 sigma h v naught by pi natural log b by a so r will be v naught by i is equal to pi over 2 sigma h natural log b by a now you might be wondering that in this case why did not we start with the total current i and from that we could have found the j and v uh, and we could have found the resistance but you see that in this case it is not clear that how the current density is going to vary along the uh, sur surface of this conductor we don't know whether this j will be uniform all across this uh, surface area or it will vary so since we did not know whether j will vary or not that's why we could not uh, go for uh, uh, you know solving this uh, question by first assuming total current i we started from the basic principle we found v then e as a function of phi and r you see that j current density is a function of the radial distance as well as phi that is it is in the direction of phi so the current density is not a uniform kind of uniform and it depends on the radial distance so that's why we have to find v then e then j then we could have find uh, we have found i and from that we have found the resistance of this conductor so in this way we can calculate resistance of any simple geometrical configuration from the basic principles by following these five steps so if you find that this lecture is helpful to you then please share and subscribe our youtube channel and also join our telegram group whose link is given in the description of this video thank you